are you ready for one of the most fun parts of mathematics, I find? And that's measuring bearings. What are bearings, I can hear you ask? Bearings are the measurement of the angle between two points. And it's used by navigators at sea and in the air and by the army and many different people to chart the exact course and to find the angle between two points from north. Here are the three steps that you need to do to measure bearing. And they'll all sound a little bit crazy until we start practicing them. So bear with me. Step one in bearings is you place the center of the protractor where it says from. What, what do you mean where it says from? If we're measuring town B, for example, from town A, we place the center of our protractor at town A. The place we're looking for is the angle we try to find, but the place where we're starting from is where we place the center of the protractor. Again, this will all become clear with practice. So we must place the center of the protractor where it says from. Step two, zero degrees must be north. Zero degrees must be exactly north. All angles must be measured with reference to a point. And if we all agree on that north is up, then we can all agree on the angle we're talking about. If some people regarded uh, or started counting from east or some people counted from south, we'd all have different angles and we wouldn't know what we're talking about. But we always count zero degrees as north, so we can all speak the same language. Three, the third and final step, is you measure clockwise from north for a similar reason. If some of us measured anti-clockwise and some of us measured clockwise, we wouldn't know if 60 degrees meant 60 degrees going east clockwise or 60 degrees going anti-clockwise. It would me mean two different things to two different people. So we always me measure clockwise. Let's try an example and then it will start to become a lot more clear, all this nonsense that I'm talking about. We're going to have town A placed there where the dot is. And town B, it's a nice town, I advise you to visit sometime, it's got nice beaches, right there at the dot. And there's a nice road between them with nice seaside views. There's the road. And the question we have today is measure the bearing of town B from town A. Of town B from town A. Okay, now notice it said from town A. Let's just say from A, meaning town A. It's so important that it, where it says from that I'm going to actually highlight that. It said from A, and that is where, according to step one, we must place the center of our protractor. For this um, tutorial, I'm going to use a protractor that I've just drawn up and and copied, and we're going to use it, but it's not transparent, so it's not like a real protractor, but I hope it helps you to understand in these examples. It's not perfect, but I think it might illustrate the point. Here's the protractor. Now it said place the center of the protractor exactly where it says from, and it says from A. I'm going to use my finger and place it on the screen, which obviously you're not going to see, and that just means that when I place the center of the protractor there, I know it's exactly at A. In real life, a protractor is transparent, so you can just place the center exactly. But I'm going to move it, so the center of the protractor is exactly at A. There it is. Notice with my protractor, zero is automatically at north, but in, for your case, you would have to turn it around carefully until zero degrees up here is north. It's a direct straight line north. So we've done step one and step two. Step three is to measure clockwise from north to the direction we're going. So we're looking at town B, so we're going to measure clockwise until we get to town B. Here's a question you might be wondering. Do we go this way round or this way round? Well, only the first way would be clockwise, so we actually do go this way round. 
until we face the angle. Now it's an obtuse angle so of the two numbers we're going to look at the 130 and indeed B is 130 degrees. Its bearing is 130 degrees from A. Let's imagine for a second though that the question was measure the bearing of town A from town B. So measure the bearing of town A from B. So important that it said from B, we're going to place the center of our protractor at B as before. Just to illustrate, if my protractor was like this, where zero degrees is not north, I'd have to spin it carefully until zero degrees was absolutely at north. Now I place the center of my protractor where it says from. In this question it said from B, so the center of my protractor using my finger is going to be exactly at town B. There we are. Now I can hear you asking, oh it would be so easy just to go anticlockwise, just to go round like so. It's so much closer than going all the way round the other side. But for consistency all angles, all bearings must be measured clockwise. Just uh, an observation here. Do you notice how much easier it is to use a 360 degree protractor? Many students use those semicircle 180 degree protractors, but I find they're far harder to use in terms of bearings, and you're much more likely to get the right answer um, if you use a 360 degree protractor, and it's a lot easier as well. So using this 360 degree protractor, we're going to measure clockwise all the way around that long way, because it has to be clockwise until we face A. And the angle is, it can't be 50, that would be the anticlockwise angle, so it must be 310. So the bearing of town A from town B is 310 degrees. Let's do quick another question. This time, the angles are going to be somewhat given to us. So we'd have a town, two towns joined by a road. This can be town C, and this will be town D. And this time, it's going to be more mathematical, and we wouldn't need a protractor, because the diagram, it would say something like, diagram not drawn accurately, or not drawn to scale. And we'd have our north line would have to be given to us, because we can't use a protractor. So that would be our north line and it would have an arrow and an N and then a few of the angles would be given to us we might have something like an angle going horizontally like so and and then the angle inside perhaps at let's say 40 degrees and the question could be something like, measure the bearing of, well, we'll do both of them actually, measure the bearing of D from C. Measure the bearing of town D from C. You might be wondering, how on earth are we going to do that without protractor? For that, we're going to have to rely on some angle knowledge. From C means that we have to start at C. We almost have to imagine that there's a north line going up. So it might help you to actually draw that north line if you're in the exam. That's our north line coming from C because all bearings have to be measured from north so we might as well draw it. Here's my question. Is it this angle going round until we face D or this angle going round until we face D? It's the second one. So it's only this angle. Why? Because that's the angle measured clockwise. How, are we gonna, how on earth are we going to find that angle though? Well, let's get started with some of the angles we can find out. If that's north and this line drawn is directly going east, it must be a 90 degree angle here. 
if it's a 90 degree angle here from north to east and that angle given to us is 40 degrees the remaining angle must be 50 degrees and actually that is the bearing of C from D I know the question is D from C but let's pretend for a second they were asking us um, the bearing of town C from D we'd have done north and would have measured clockwise until we face C. Bearings, though, always have to be three digits. So when we, if we wrote that answer, it would have to be 0, 50 degrees. The reason for that is that in ships, they might, if you just said, say, 24 degrees, they might not know whether you're about to say 245 or 240. So just to be clear that you mean just 24, you say 0, 24 all bearings must be three digits. That's the bearing of town C of yeah town C from town D. But what about the bearing of town D from C? So this angle here. Well, that's 50 degrees looking from north. What would this angle be then? It's a bit harder this one, but if that angle in red is 50, the angle here between two parallel lines, I'm going to be using the interior angle rule, which I'll talk about again in another video. But interior angles between two parallel lines add up to 180. So if that's 50 degrees, this must be 130 degrees. Is that our bearing? Not quite, because bearing, remember, is not the anti-clockwise direction. It has to be the clockwise direction. How would we work out the angle going this other side? Well, angles around a point are 360 degrees. So we do 360, take away 130, which would be 230 degrees. So the bearing, the actual answer to the question, the bearing of town D from C, we started at C, zero was north, we went clockwise until we're facing D, and that angle was 230 degrees. I know it can sometimes seem complicated, but there's three key things you need to remember with bearings. They will always give you a place you're measuring from. Place the center of the protractor where it says from. Then make sure zero degrees is north. So if you had a protractor like so, notice how zero degrees is north. And if I was doing town C again, we can check how accurate my line measurement is because I'm placing it at the center of the protractor at C. Then we measure clockwise, so you always measure from north going clockwise all the way around here. And if you see the reflex angle to town D, oh my goodness, is exactly 230 degrees. A pretty lucky guess. So we've measured it both with a protractor and using our angle knowledge. And both times the bearing was 230 degrees.